shake a fin, chill your gills, having fun, having thrills, eating bugs, look a snail, come along and I'll tell the tale of Brookie and Rainbow, having adventures in the rivers and streams of the Susquehanna Valley, it's Brookie and Rainbow, saving our streams, laughing, learning, having fun with Rainbow and Brookie. Peace out, Trout. Hey, Auntie Rainbow. How's the sign look? Like a macro in May. It's amazing. I'm not sure anyone's gonna see the sign all the way out here, though. Oh, chill your gills, Auntie. Let me take care of that. If the people won't come to the stream, I'll bring the stream to the people. Aren't we already at a live stream? Ha! <laughs> Tell another joke, you're bringing out the crickets. Hello from Solomon's Creek Borehole. This is Brooke Fields coming to you live with my Auntie Rainbow. Auntie Rainbow, say hi. Hey everybody. As Brookie said, my name is Rainbow. So naturally, I love every color. And even I don't like this color in my water. And neither does our food. Iron in the water can suffocate macro invertebrates. So if you're a trout like us, you won't find a good meal around here. Well, I hope you packed a lunch. But on a serious note, ever since Brookie got stuck in polluted water after that storm last year, we've been advocating to save our streams so there will be clean water for everybody. What's that? I don't know. Hide. I'm gonna take you down along Solomon's Creek here in Hanover Township at the edge of South Wilkesbury, and we're going to take a look at the stream here. If you look upstream, notice how the water is pretty clean. It's yeah. got some sediment and dirt in it. And then you see a line coming down the stream here, and then the water turns nice and orange, right? Yeah. And did you notice anything different here? Is this, is there a different kind of smell? It smells like stinky yeah. socks. Stinky yeah. socks, yeah. How about what, what else does it remind you of? What? Like rotten eggs. Yeah, you're right. So see that little borehole over there coming out of the ground? Yeah. All the water is coming up out of the mines over there. And what it does, it adds oxygen to the water and it's gases that comes up out of the mines and it's called hydrogen sulfide. And that's the same thing as the rotten egg smell you, you're talking about that you smell now. Hi, Hi. Bobby. Remember us? Oh, hey, Brickies. Hey, Rainbow. How can I forget you guys? Are you just living here now? No, no, we're actually living in the nice clean section upstream where you helped us reunite last time. We're down here at Solomon's Creek to advocate for clean water. Well, I'm here on a tour with Tempe and Elise and we're showing them Solomon's Creek and also the mine drainage from the Solomon's Creek boreholes. Nice to meet you both. Don't let us hold you up though. We were just finishing up. Well, would you two like to join us on the rest of our watershed tour? Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, come along. I want to show you something here. These are called cattails. Cattails are the kind of plants that sometimes are often used for treatment of mine water. You see here this little corn dog looking thing up here? Does it look like yeah. a hot dog on a stick, sort of? Yeah. All right, well, this cattail here grows on a stalk. And if you come all the way down to the bottom, you notice it has a real large root system. Look at this. You see the different types of roots on the cattail? Yeah. And if you look here, do you see how the roots that look like hairs and it's really fibrous material mm -hmm. that's called rhizomes and the rhizomes are the bottom of the plants that actually when the water from the mine filters through it it acts like a, a filter that can bring all the iron into the plant's root system and so it holds it together kind of like the mud so you see all the mud here mm -hmm. this is the plant when it first starts growing and after the mine water runs through it all this here becomes iron that helps to filter out from the mine and that comes through the water, and then this plant is actually helping to treat the water coming out of the mine. Hey girls, how are you? Good. My name is Mike. Hi Mike. We're going to be doing a flow monitoring test today. Do you guys want to help out? Yes, yes of, of course. course. Awesome, well follow me. We're going to go up the stream, but watch out, it's kind of slippery. So just walk slowly. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is know how wide this stream is. So we're gonna take a tape measure and stretch it across. Okay, so the stream is 
17 feet wide. And this little contraption is kind of like a pinwheel. It spins as the water goes by it. And this computer around my neck measures how many times it goes. So that was one way to measure flow. This is another way to measure flow. What are those? Lemons. Lemons. Okay, so right here is 10 feet. Okay, here's my stopwatch. Are you ready? And go. There it is. Boom. So that took six seconds. So I did the calculations. and the flow is about 20,000 gallons per minute. If you break that down into bathtubs, it would fill seven bathtubs in one second. Wow, that's a lot of flow. That is a lot. Isn't it? Oh, would you guys want to help with some experiments? Yes, yes we'd sir. love to. All right, come on over. I have some lab coats that are just your size. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn these carnations into colored carnations by using capillary action, like what you learned about with the cattails. So all we have to do is fill these with water, which they already are, and we're gonna add about 20 drops of food coloring. And the flowers are gonna suck it up all the way into their petals. So our next experiment we're going to do is actually taking this mine water and it looks pretty clear, right? Mm -hmm. But we know that it's actually, it has iron inside it. And we're going to be able to do an experiment to figure out where the iron is. So the first thing we're going to do is add some baking soda in order to raise the pH. Because this is very acidic right now, we want to make it basic. And then we're also going to add some hydrogen peroxide in order to oxygenate the water. This is going to make the iron drop out of solution so we'll actually be able to see it. Good, that's good. All right, and now we're going to let it sit for a little while and see what happens. Right now it's clouded up a little bit, but we're going to actually be able to see the iron dropping down to the bottom. And this is sort of what we do in our treatment systems to get rid of the iron in the water. So you can see a big change now. The oxygen, all these bubbles, and the pH being raised really let us see that iron in the water. Yeah, that's amazing. It's very pretty. Hey, would you like to learn more about now how we're going to process the iron oxide that we took from Solomon's Creek boreholes yeah, earlier yeah. today? The iron oxide is collected at Solomon's Creek and brought to the EPCAM office. It is then placed in a solar kiln to evaporate the water and bake the sediment in the sun. When it is taken out of the kiln, it is a crumbly powder like the consistency of flour. The powder is then sifted into an even finer powder. Next, it is placed into our soil oven to bake for several hours. This makes it turn from orange to bright red. Look at how much we've already processed there. There's another anthracite red to go along with our probably 100 or so packets of yellow boy orange and we will put the inventory list on our website. And then what we have is a lot of artists, um, teachers, potters, and uh, folks that want to use the iron oxide for the pigment. And they'll be doing tie-dye t-shirts like the ones you're wearing, and they use it for different art forms. And we'll be doing art shows and working with local artists 
to kind of create awareness. Would you like to go see some of those artwork pieces that some of the artists yes. did locally? All right, we have those in the other room, so we'll show you that in a little bit. Thank you. All right, great. Bye. See ya. Girls, welcome to our art exhibit. Hello. Come take a look. Hi, kids. Hey, Rainbow. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? We thought we'd come join you at this AMV art exhibit. Yay. Oh, awesome. Like Here we have various different crafts made from iron oxide that we got from a local stream, Solomon's Creek. So the iron oxide that we processed here at Epcamera was mixed with different oils to create paint that we can use for paintings. And that's how you painted those pictures. Right. Yes, we also used anthracite coal that we got from the Heber Breaker site here in Ashley, PA. We have some birch bark and some birch leaves that were recovered from the ground. And we got this fiery cloud background from mixing the iron oxide with linseed oil. So it's a really nice piece to showcase our history. Did you know you can use this iron oxide pigment in t-shirts? Wow, I did. Wow. wow. You want to tie-dye some t-shirts? Yeah. All right, let's go. We'll see you over there. We'll see you over there. Hey girls, welcome Hi. back. Hi. Would you guys like to make some tie-dye t-shirts with the iron oxide today? Yeah. yeah. Of course. Oh wow, look at those cool patterns. How about that, Brooke, can you take a look at those? Those look real cool. I wish I had one for myself that I could take back to the stream to show all my friends. Well guess what, Brookie? I got a surprise for you. I ended up making one for you anyway. Really? Yeah. For here, me? Here you go, take it home, make wow. sure Auntie sees it. Thank you. Hi girls. Hi. Hi Rainbow. Hi. Hey Rainbow. Well, you two have learned a lot about mind water and iron oxide. Um, we make our own iron oxide chalk. Would you like to learn how and maybe help us out a little bit? Yeah, yeah of course. Great, we can, you. of course, buy our chalk at the store, but this is way more fun and easy. And we get to use recycled iron oxide with these pretty colors. And it's really easy to do, and all it is is three different materials. We have plaster of Paris, which is a little bit like a clay, just regular tap water, and the iron oxide. We put out a few samples for you for each of them, and we have a cup and a mixer, mixing stick for you, too. Would somebody like to mix them together for me? I'll do it. Thank you. Wait, and just stir that together. Okay, next we're going to pour it into the mold. And so once it's poured into the molds, you let it dry. Usually it takes overnight, um, but the next day you take the tray, give it a twist and pop it out, and it comes out looking like this. So you can be ready to make your own art, play hopscotch, or whatever you'd like to do and have fun. Oh, wow. That looks amazing. You want to try and draw me? Yeah, sure. Let's see who does a better job. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Officially a tie. I love that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Rainbow. Thank you. Well, that's Iron Oxide Chalk. Thank you so much for your help, girls. You did an excellent job. You're welcome. You. Peace out, Trout. All right. Thanks for everything, guys. We need to head back to the stream now. Yes. Bye. 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 Thank you. Hey everybody, Brookfield here again, streaming live with my Auntie Rainbow. Hey, I had such a good day. I learned so much about art and clean water. Me too. I learned about water chemistry and about the mines, and I didn't know there was so much pollution in our streams around here. If you're interested in finding out more, please visit us at epcamera.org.
Bye, everybody. Bye. Action.